Welcome to the Toyota Key Off EVAP system video number two. In the first video we took a look at how the system operated and what it was even for. And then we left off taking a look at an automatic EVAP test and seeing the results. So remember we went ahead and graphed our results and we saw that we had ourselves a gross leak. Remember step number one was our atmospheric check. Here the ECM took a look at atmospheric pressure. Then it turned on the pump and gave us a 20 thousandths reference orifice pressure. That was about 20, minus 25 millimeters HG. Step number three, the vent valve closes and then starts to draw the system into a negative pressure. Here we can see that we did not draw it into a negative pressure at all. And we also had our purge DTC due to the fact that we did not have that rise in pressure when the purge valve opened. So let's take a look at how we diagnose this. So in the first video, we established that our leak could be coming from anywhere in this dark gray area. Could be coming from the canister, could be coming from the purge line and purge valve assembly, could be coming from this vent line, or from the tank. Now, the way that we're going to test this is by a process of elimination and by separating the system up into sections. Section 1 is going to be the canister and purge line and valve assembly. Section 2 is going to be the vent line. And then section 3 will be the tank. Now, the way that we're going to separate this up into the different sections is by removing the vent line. This is going to be the toughest part of diagnosis is getting that off. But it has to be done. Once we have it removed, it will be very simple to test each area or section separately. Let's take a look at our lines first. First of all, we have the fresh air line. This is going to be where the fresh air comes into the vent valve and there's its filter. That goes up at the filler neck. Then we have the actual vent line. This is going to be the one that can be identified by the going from the canister to the fuel tank. And then our third line, the smaller rubber hose, is going to be the purge line. Okay, after a little bit of struggling, we got the vent line off. Now, it's a good idea to go ahead and take a look in the ends and look at the o-ring itself. Make sure it hasn't rolled into the hose. This can certainly be a problem when putting the vent line back on that you don't have a leak from the o-ring rolling into the hose itself. So, other than that, look the hose over real well. Look for any cracks, look for any holes, anything of that nature that could cause a leakage. And then set that aside. We'll come back to that. Okay, so let's test area number one. We're going to get into the utility again. And this time, we're going to go to the manual test rather than the automatic test. And we're going to go to step number three for the leak check. Okay, and we're going to utilize the gauge pressure. And remember, our 20 thousandths reference orifice leak was a minus 26 millimeters HG. After 10 seconds, the test will start and it will go right into our first atmospheric check. Step 1. Says it right across the top there, atmospheric pressure check. Hit next, and it will put us into step number 2 where it turns the pump on and gives us our 20 thousandths reference orifice. Here we're showing about minus 26. Go to step number three. Now the pump is turned on and the vent valve is closed, which means that we have a negative pressure going to our system right now. So I'm going to put my thumb over the canister itself and see if it draws down below that minus 26 millimeters HG. Okay, so we can see the canister and where the vent line connects specifically. Get my finger over. Now let's watch the pressure. Okay, now I should be seeing an immediate change in our pressure. Notice that our millimeters HG gauge is not dropping at all. I think our leak is in the canister or purge line. Now the only thing left 
is to go ahead and isolate which one it is. To do so, I'm going to take a pair of pincher pliers and put it on the purge line right next to the canister. This will cancel out the purge line itself. Okay, now let's recheck. With the pincher pliers on and my thumb over the canister itself, let's see what we get. Okay, we're drawing it into a negative pressure. And we're waiting for minus 26. There we go, we've gone past it. Our leak is not in the canister, it's in the purge line. Looking the system over real well, it brought us to this point right by the engine and the purge valve. Looking at it, we found that we on the rubber line we found some dry rot where the hose had actually split, creating a large leak. That was so much fun, why don't we do another one? Let's take a look at another issue. Here we have another failed monitor for a leak. If you take a look at step number one, atmospheric pressure, then the pump came on. Step two, we have our reference orifice pressure. Looks like it went down to about a minus 27 millimeters HG. And then step three, the vent valve closed, and it looks like we were able to draw a negative pressure, but was nowhere near the negative 27 that we needed to see. Let's see what we can figure out. With the vent line removed, I'm now gonna put my finger over where the vent line connects to the canister. And let's pay attention to step number three of the manual test, see what happens. Okay, in manual step number three, looking at our pressure, Okay, we're looking for minus 27. And we've passed it. Our leak is not in the canister or the purge line. Since our leak is not in the canister or the purge line, the next step is to go ahead and add the vent line back onto the canister and then check the vent line itself. Okay, with it installed on the canister, now I'm going to put my finger into the other side of the vent line and look for the pressure to draw down into that negative pressure. Again, looking for more than minus 27 millimeters HG. So with my finger in the vent line, let's see what happens. Starting to draw down into a negative pressure, Looking for minus 27 millimeters HG. And it looks like we're getting to about a minus 17, minus 18. And it's not going any further than that. Looks like our leak is in the vent line. Upon further inspection, we found our problem. The vent line where we plugged it into the canister had an O-ring that was rolled over into the tube itself. This can be a very common problem. Be very careful when putting these vent lines back on. It's very easy to do. Okay, so say that everything passed. The only thing left at that point would be the tank side. So remember, here's an example of the ORVR valve. There's nothing wrong with putting a smoke machine here on the end of the ORVR valve to go ahead and see if you can see smoke coming out of the four major areas of the tank. Remember, the ORVR valve seals with a rubber grommet. But from there, fuel cap would be number one. Fuel pump, where it hooks up, would be number two. The ORVR valve would be possibility number three. And then number four would be a flat out hole in the tank itself. Now remember, You'll probably have a fuel smell or some sort of residue if, you, if there were a hole in the tank itself. That's it for leaks. But what about diagnosis when it comes to a component problem? Remember, the monitor tells us all. Step number one, atmospheric check. That means the pressure sensor is working and the ECM is seeing that pressure. Step two, 
the pump turns on. We would not see this drop in pressure from atmospheric if the pump was not working. So therefore, we'd be able to tell if the pump was not working from this monitor. Step 3. The vent valve closes. If the vent valve clo did not close, we would not get this change from step 2 to step 3 back up to atmospheric pressure. And then we would not have this drawdown that we see in step number 3. Then, once we have it in that negative pressure below our, our uh, reference orifice check, if the purge valve did not work, we would not have this rise in pressure from the negative pressure back up to atmospheric if the purge valve was not working. So remember, our graph can tell us whether components are operating as well. So from there, there is active tests for each one of the components and it becomes easy to go ahead and check power and ground and figure out your problems from there. That's it. That's it for the Toyota Key Off Evaporative Emission System. Hopefully this video series was helpful for you in understanding the system, knowing what it's doing, and also understanding how to diagnose the system when there's an issue. Thanks for watching.